we're very grateful to you for joining us. I'm Ian Gray, I'm Chairman of the Egyptian British Chamber of Commerce. And I want to say to everyone, welcome to the first DIT, the Department of International Trade, about the UK government and the British and British Chamber of Commerce Infrastructure Committee meeting. If, if, if I may, um, we're, we're going to get a presentation from the Minister, but if I may, in kicking off, all of us here today know there are great opportunities for businesses between the two countries. One of the challenges is getting people to talk to each other. And what we have found over the years is the best way to communicate is when we have a focused session on, on a sector so that everyone who is attending is actually interested in the subject matter. We have all been to general conferences when there's an opening, a keynote speech and half the room walk out. This is one where we want everyone in the room and you should all want to be here to hear what there is. So this is the start of these infrastructure committee meetings. Um, and the focus today is very much on um, transport and logistics. Okay. So the committee framework that we've got is to ensure that we have people who are interested. Um, and rather than me talk too much, we, I'm going to hand over in a moment or two to the two co-chairs um, of this committee um, uh, and I'll, I'll do the introductions for them. But I do want to say, um, first of all, on behalf of the IT and um, uh, the Egyptian British Chamber, um, thank you to Your Excellency, um, Dr. Kamal Al-Wazir, as Minister of Transport, for turning up today to um, talk to us. So it's a big thanks to you. We're also very pleased to have joining us His Excellency Ambassador Tariq Adol um, from London. Um, and on behalf of the British government, unfortunately, Sir Geoffrey um, had to go away for some personal things, um, but we're being joined by Anissa Dati, um, and Anissa is the director of DIT in Cairo, um, and they are our partners in getting these infrastructure workshops up and running, which is all good all round. So without much further ado, um, I would like to introduce the chair of the um, thing. We have Gordon Turley who is the director of major projects in um, Mott McDonald. Um, so Gordon, thank you for taking this on and thank you for being here today. And we also have Alfred Asil, that many of you will know who is the CEO of Menorail Transport Consultants in Cairo. So I'm going to get out of the way. Um, I hope we've covered anything. If, you, if you've got any questions you want to raise during the speeches, there is a chat button at the bottom. And I would like to hand over now to Alfred um, to introduce himself and, and, and the event uh, as one of our co-chairs and our co-chair from Cairo. So Alfred, welcome and over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ian. I'm very honored and pleased to be co-chairing uh, the first uh, infrastructure uh, committee event uh, in the presence of His Excellency uh, Minister Kamil Wazir and uh, Ambassador Tariq Kamil and the representative of the uh, UK government, uh, Mrs. Anissa. Uh, let me start by uh, telling you that uh, in Egypt, uh, is uh, uh, enjoying uh, the benefits of the reform program done uh, under the leadership of our president, Fattah uh, Sisi, and uh, through the IMF reform program. And now we are entering the second wave of reform where uh, the role of the private sector is expected to increase and very encouraging to the foreign direct investment. We, we uh, of course, we would like to call on our UK partners uh, to participate and to have a big share uh, in uh, the upcoming developments in the infrastructure and the railway sector. Egypt have uh, in the past uh, uh, six years made a great development in infrastructure, starting by uh, the doubling of uh, the Suez Canal corridor, led 
by uh, uh, His Excellency Kamal Wazir when he was uh, sharing the Corps of Engineers. We had uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure projects in electricity, power, uh, renewable energies, and of course, uh, uh, a very big road network. We're uh, in a network of the railway. We're doing a lot of projects, and His Excellency, I think, will be covering this. So Egypt now is uh, uh, one of the leading economies, even under COVID. We managed to have a positive uh, growth rate around 5%, and the expectations is this will grow in the coming few years. We also believe that we are the gateway now to Africa and partnering with the, the private sector and the public sector in Egypt is a good opportunity to do so. Uh, so uh, I can easily say that uh, Egypt now is the land of opportunities in all sectors. And I would uh, leave uh, my co-chair, uh, Jordan, to take uh, the lead and to tell us from uh, the UK side uh, what is their expectations and how can they support us. Thank you so much. Oh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I must say that my name isn't uh, Turb18671. Once. I'm not quite sure how that goes. Uh, that got there, but I'm really pleased uh, to be asked to uh, co-chair the uh, Egyptian British Chamber of Commerce with uh, Alfred. Uh, and you know, I I firmly believe, having been involved in several uh, of these, that uh, you know the these joint country initiatives involving the private sector, the, the government are hugely uh, important. Uh, they make it much easier uh, to build relationships, to transfer knowledge, uh, and in many cases to continue to jointly bid for projects. Yeah, and this this is particularly, particularly important uh, in the infrastructure, the transport infrastructure. Uh, projects, which is is very much seeing a boom uh, globally. Uh, we're certainly seeing it, uh, and you know, Egyptian is a very significant market uh, for the UK, uh, particularly in uh, information flow, transfer of knowledge. And indeed, you know, for us, the uh, UK export finance uh, is supporting uh, major projects within Egypt, uh, such as the Cairo monorail. Uh, but they they do have more capacity as well. The British government, through uh, UK export finances, does have more capacity to support further projects. So, yeah, I really look forward to working with you all. Uh, and uh, working with my fellow co colleagues in the Egyptian British uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, and to develop it into a uh, you know a force where we can we can really uh, build up the relationships and work jointly on projects uh, both in Egypt, Egypt and uh, in the UK as well. Thank you very much, uh, Alfred. And I'll pass you on now to Anissa Dati. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Excellencies. Firstly, on behalf of the British government, I would like to express my sincere thanks to His Excellency Minister Kamil Al Wazir for participating in our first infrastructure committee meeting. It is a great honour to have your presence and to help UK companies understand the Egyptian government's requirements as our two countries look to partner together in the transportation sector. 
Egypt, as you've heard, has many exciting plans in the transport sector, in public transportation, including metro lines, the monorail, and the high-speed rail project, um, to name just a few. We look forward to hearing about many more of the opportunities so we can offer the best that UK companies have to offer in terms of capability and financing and partner to, to help you meet your ambitions in this exciting sector and also meet ambitions in the green agenda in terms of reducing congestion on the roads and climate change ambitions. Um, we have an exciting array of companies that have joined us today and we hope that this is the first step in collaborating to understand your requirements and needs to make sure that we best tailor them to what you need and match make UK capability in this space. Um, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to His Excellency Ambassador Tarek Adel. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you, Ian, and uh, I would also like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Asil and Mr. Turley for uh, co-chairing the uh, committee's future work. Uh, I'm sure this committee will be of great value in further enhancing dialogue and providing project-specific cooperation in the field of infrastructure. I would like to uh, welcome uh, His Excellency Minister Cameron Wazir and thank him for joining us today. We've all seen the impact of the work and great efforts introduced uh, by Minister El Wazir to the transportation sector in Egypt over the past few years, and uh, which contributed uh, immensely to the modernization of Egypt's infrastructure as well as enhancing connectivity and creating new job opportunities. Let me also praise the excellent work by the Egyptian British Chamber for their tireless efforts to strengthen economic cooperation between Egypt and the United Kingdom. This initiative today, in collaboration with DIT, serves once again as a good example in this area of cooperation. As you are all aware, investment in infrastructure projects lies at the heart of our government long-term vision for sustainable development due to this sector's immense potential for transforming the economy, creating jobs and enhancing connectivity. These projects help SMEs in Egypt have better access and provide opportunities to better integrate on the regional and global levels. Many private companies play a huge role in these projects, and they are indeed our partners for change. Egypt and the United Kingdom share a strong history of cooperation in the transport sector. And today, we have many joint projects in different fields. At the forefront is developing the new electric mobility that will transport millions of citizens to and from the new administrative capital every day. So we've made progress over the years, but we could still do a lot more, especially when it comes to secure long-term finance with favorable terms. I'm sure that today's discussion with the private sector and other financial institutions would help better understand both the opportunities and the challenges in this vital sector. Let me now give the floor to our keynote speaker, his Excellency Minister Kamil El Wazir, the Egyptian Minister for Transport. Mr. Minister, you have the floor. Father Wazir. You have the floor, Excellency. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and good morning to everyone. At the outset, I'd like to express the thanks and appreciation to the ABCC, the Egyptian Bridge Chamber of Commerce, for the efforts exerted for organizing this virtual forum in very difficult situations and unprecedented challenges because of COVID-19, which has its implications and repercussions on the lives of humans and the different aspects of economic and social lives in all the parts of the world. This necessitates a consolidation of of efforts regionally and internationally in order to overcome the repercussions of the COVID-19. I'd like to say that thanks to God, uh, 
Egypt has been able because of the awareness of uh, the Egyptian people and uh, their government uh, and its leadership was able uh, to uh, work uh, during this period uh, and we uh, were able to avoid lockdown and to restore uh, the normal life for tourism with uh, taking all the precautions in order to have all the economic sector working actively in all aspects. Dear friends, we know that the transport is becoming as part and parcel of the uh, all the economic development activities and it is impacting all socio-economic aspects because everything is depending on the different means of transport and the networks uh, and to have uh, also facility for and um, facilitation for the intra-trade and the freight movement in order to have better economic uh, development and having also better capital movement for investment and also it, uh, it facilitates the mobility of citizens between the different countries for tourism, entertainment, culture, economic, social, the uh, therapeutic aspects. Uh, and here I'd like to say that the ranking of Egypt in relation to the road quality has jumped to the rank of uh, 28 in the year 2019, and this is compared to be 118 in the year 2014. And Egypt is adopting a very ambitious economic reform plan that has achieved big successes uh, in a, a relatively short period, and this is the testimony of the international uh, bodies within uh, the uh, framework of the leadership, which is a political leadership, which is really aware and well informed and based on the vision for sustainable development 2030. And I'm sure that there will be much more successes in the next period, inshallah, within the light of the big projects being uh, implemented in a big country like Egypt with a market which is really, really attractive compared to uh, the, when it comes to the number of the population and its uh, uh, geographical uh, set situation and also what's being provided for the investors through a legislative conducive environment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Egypt and uh, the UK in December uh, 20. Uh, 20 had signed a cooperation of agreement and it has entered into force in January 2021, which is working and establishing for uh, the economic development between both uh, countries and uh, cooperation between both countries uh, for uh, long term in all aspects, economically and industrially and at other levels. And both leaderships of both countries are working and enhancing for enhancing the uh, economic uh, cooperation in order to have more mutual projects between both countries in the post Brexit uh, phase, particularly the UK is having a leading position when it comes to the contribution to the FDI in the Egyptian market through uh, 136 companies with investments that uh, goes up to $5.4 billion and mostly they are in the manufacturing sector in addition to investments uh, that are big investments in the extraction oil uh, industries and i'd like to say that this agreement that has been concluded it has included the feasibility studies and technical studies to be conducted for some of the infrastructure projects in order to have more contribution of the private sector in this field and the uk will be supporting the efforts of Egypt in order to develop a program for regional uh, connectivity with uh, the uh, different African countries in order to have Egypt as a hub for energy and economic uh, activities and trade and also for uh, the tripartite uh, cooperation between Afri African countries, uh, Britain or UK and Egypt. Undoubtedly, this launches a new era of uh, the historical relations between both uh, friend countries uh, in all cooperation aspects in social, economic, cultural aspects and others. And this meeting is coming in a very important time within the framework of such agreement in order to see how to translate it into actions or, uh, in the ground through investments that are done jointly in the different infrastructure aspects and we are ready for providing all support and overcoming all hurdles and obstacles and i'll be presenting to you a presentation that would include as the most important uh, projects that are being implemented with British uh, uh, com companies or financed by uh, British bodies and also the future projects that are really uh, 
uh, of priority for the Egyptian uh, government or for the Egyptian state and uh, what's related uh, to uh, the transport sector so that it would be given a priority in uh, the uh, investments from the UK, particularly in the strategic mega projects within the framework of uh, our uh, willingness and readiness uh, to uh, have uh, such a kind of joint uh, economic cooperation activities. Very quickly, as I told you, we have some of the projects uh, that we are having at the current time that's uh, being implemented in collaboration either with companies from the UK or being financed by international banks or institutions from the UK in addition to the future projects uh, that we want to cooperate with you on, I mean, by using uh, rich companies. Uh, Actually, for uh, all the roads uh, and uh, bridges uh, uh, that are being implemented in Egypt, this is done by the uh, Egyptian funding and also by the Egyptian companies. So this is something that we are uh, broadening. You all know about this, but it is a key really to all the projects that are really depending on this. Also, when it comes to the rest of the projects that are being implemented by the Egyptian government, uh, it is done by partner, through partnerships with uh, uh, English companies. On top of this is the, the uh, uh, two lines uh, of a monorail for the new capital and 6th of October City pro, through funding from GP. P. Morgan with a value with 1.885 billion euros and with a guarantee from the British Export Finance. Another project is to supply 50 new locomotives and upgrade other 50 in collaboration with Progress Rail and ENR in Egypt with a value of 201 million euros. And this is being also by a finance to the percentage, some percentage by the uh, British Export Finance, 32%, and HSBC, uh, 68%. Uh, these are the projects that uh, we are having, which are financed by uh, fi British financial institutions or uh, being implemented by uh, British companies. But let me say that this is, these are very, very few uh, compared to what's expected from the British companies. And I hope that what I'll be mentioning to you right now would be really a matter of interest for you uh, so that we would cooperate together. First one comes to ENR, which is the Egyptian National Railway Authority. I'll be mentioning just like bullet points. I will not delve into the details. So whenever you are interested in any of these projects, just let us know and we'll be sitting with you. We'll be giving you all uh, the studies that are relevant to social, environmental, economic aspects, everything. These projects is the start, start with the establishment project of the railway line Menashe 6th of October. And here let me say that maybe some projects we have already talked about or introduced or offered to other suppliers or other uh, uh, companies, but it's not finalized so far. So it's introduced and offered to everyone, banks uh, for finance or institutions or other different institutions and companies for implementation. As we said, the first project is 49 uh, kilometers and the, uh, and the other line, another project is the the dual project, uh, dual line project in Mbaba Itaiba Road, it had two to uh, seven kilometers. Uh, the uh, project for establishing uh, the railway line for freight, Bilbais, Ashim, Ramadan, Rubeki, 61 kilometers. Uh, the establishment of the uh, new line for Matruh Garboub, 45 kilometers, and the track renewals and upgrades, Matruh Saloum, uh, 27 kilometers. Uh, the project on uh, the extensions of the uh, railway line of Cairo Aswan to uh, reach Toshka and Sudan. Also, the uh, renovation and restoration of the efficiency uh, of the rail, uh, railway line in Ferdan, Shark Bursaid, Ba'r Al Abd, and extending it to Arish and then Rafah and Taba. And uh, also, uh, we, this uh, another project which will be connected to Safaga Hergada uh, is the project for uh, the establishment and operation and maintenance of Abu Tartur Qana. Uh, actually, uh, all our uh, main and major workshops are also offered for uh, such investment, and that's why we have a project for the management and op operation of these workshops uh, that are owned by ENR, and also the management and operation of companies and sectors and lines
lines that uh, are relevant to railway. We have several of these actually. Uh, we have a company that's called Integrated Services Company uh, and also so we ha are having different companies uh, that are working in railway, the sleeper car uh, company, for example, uh, the freight uh, uh, transport company. So all the companies that uh, are to be invested in are offered to you if you are interested to cooperate for its management and operation, inshallah. I will not be delving into details. Uh, here and also the total costs uh, and things like that uh, because this would be something which would be under consideration and review uh, whenever you express your interest uh, in any of these projects uh, and also for the workshops uh, our colleague uh, my colleagues here had stressed it uh, but actually when you are interested in investing in railway companies or affiliate companies for the uh, next uh, near future period, we'll be having a very big project, which is not only railway here, actually, uh, it is everything, each and everything. Here we're speaking about the third uh, line of the metro that has uh, been uh, awarded to uh, uh, RATV and also uh, another uh, line of uh, train related project is also awarded to RATB, also the high speed uh, train, uh, it is also uh, offered uh, uh, for the operation by, and management by uh, uh, other, another company. So again, the sleeper car company, the integrated service company, all these companies are now offered uh, for investments. And also we are to establish a freight company, uh, also Trans IT. Uh, it's one of the companies that are also uh, offered for investment, maybe invest in it as uh, shareholders. Uh, as we said, uh, the uh, type of cars, whether the new ones coming from Spain or the ones that are coming from transnational, uh, uh, from Russia and Hungary. So all these are offered for operation and uh, this is to be done in maybe uh, individually or in collaboration with the ENR in Egypt. In relation to the metro or the underground in Egypt subway, also we are having the third line, oh no, actually I meant the sixth line, it's also offered for uh, also uh, the uh, participation in the uh, building and also uh, operation and management. Actually, it's a big and long and promising line. If you are interested in the sixth line of the subway, the metro, we are uh, ready uh, to have you in this. And also the operation and uh, the um, ma maintenance uh, of uh, the metro in Alexandria and also a Raml tram in Alexandria. Well, we are speaking about operation and management because and, and maintenance sometimes because we had already made deals and our contracts are already concluded for building or construction and this, the other things also uh, we will have the building or constructing side would be different from the contracts for operation and management in relation to the ports the marine ports all of these also uh, are to be implemented uh, through uh, the Egyptian uh, companies, Egyptian consultants, uh, and Egyptian uh, money or funds, but the operation uh, and equipping it with equipment, uh, this is also offered to all the uh, companies in the international arena. And now there are companies that has already uh, approached us, and some com companies also had uh, awarded, had been awarded like uh, the big uh, uh, terminal, Alexandria platform 55 to 62. And now we are negotiating in the final levels of negotiations uh, with the CMA from France about this, uh, uh, this terminal. In Jamieta also, we have this also Eurogate, which is uh, from Germany in uh, coalition with other and alliances with other uh, companies and contractors. So it's not just empty words. Here we are walking the talk uh, and having quick actions. Those who will keep pace with us, uh, we are welcoming those who will not keep pace. We really regret it. 
Okay, these projects, as I said, uh, these are uh, projects, mega projects, uh, uh, in addition or apart from the uh, 55 uh, platform, 62 platform. Uh, actually, we respect our uh, negotiations with the CMA from France, but if they fail to have a deal with us in a satisfactory manner, uh, maybe we, we, we re-offer it, so be prepared. Uh, also, these are the projects that uh, are offered for the uh, current time. It is uh, for the one uh, is um, the uh, multi-purpose uh, uh, terminal in the Khaila, uh, and uh, this uh, this is for operation and management and also uh, we have uh, different uh, parts in the terminals in the khila three in the khila actually and in max as well uh, as well we will be having a max to be uh, built by egyptian companies but uh, of course we will be having a collaboration with the consultant uh, international consultancy firms uh, for uh, the feasibility studies, and this uh, will be something that's to be done uh, jointly uh, between the Khaila and Alexandria. And now we have the so-called the Notwas Basin, uh, and this is also one of the projects that we are having for the current time, and it's also in uh, Alexandria. Also here, um, these are the details of all these terminals uh, and these all these platforms. In it, kind of detail that you want just to express your interest and you will be uh, given all the information that you want. Uh, in relation to uh, the uh, Red Sea uh, ports, so we have uh, the uh, multi-purpose uh, terminal in Safaga and it's really promising and also uh, we uh, have uh, the uh, terminal in Port of Fiq uh, to be uh, operated and managed and also the uh, multi-purpose terminal in Weba. Lots of details here. I'm not delving uh, delve into all these details now. With regard to Damietta, the Damietta port, now we are implementing uh, mega projects in Damietta port and we are uh, establishing a Western platform and also extending uh, the uh, length of the eastern platform and also we will be uh, having other terminals in Damietta, uh, uh, in the Damietta uh, terminals or Damietta uh, port and we uh, will be having uh, different platforms with different uh, uh, lenses uh, uh, there in different places like Sawama and other areas and as I told you we have uh, agreed uh, with uh, uh, some uh, companies uh, on uh, some of uh, the uh, terminals, but uh, but the mega terminal with the platforms of uh, 3,000 kilometers uh, be beyond the barrier of, war of waves, this is something that's being now offered for the execution or building, but, and uh, whenever we finish this, uh, we uh, will be offering it uh, for uh, contracts, for operation and, um, and management and maintenance. Uh, actually, for these projects, their details are available, just ask for them whenever you express interest. Uh, also, when it comes to uh, the, uh, the dry ports and logistics centers, uh, actually, this is really promising in Egypt and we have agreed already with the private sector in Egypt uh, and the joint uh, uh, private sector from Egypt and uh, non-Egyptian uh, sides. We have agreed on the dry port in the 6th of October uh, and, uh, or, and also the uh, logistics center and also the rest of uh, the dry ports in Achim Ramadan, Sadat, Burg al Arab, Damietta, Tor, Beni Swayf, uh, whether the new Beni Swayf uh, or uh, the uh, Fay new Fayum areas. Uh, and here I'd like to tell my colleagues that there is some amendments, uh, some modification here that you need to, need to have when it comes to uh, exactly where in Beni Swayf. There is the new Beni Swayf, uh, there's an eastern part of Beni Swayf where we will be having uh, some logistics center, but Western the Nile, there is another uh, logistics center on the road, uh, which is the Western Desert Road, uh, Cairo Aswan. And also there will be another one through the uh, railway, uh, through the e-mobility, electric mobility. And also we have the new Sohag. Actually, there are other, uh, as I said, logistic, uh, the logistic centers in Saloum, Baltim, uh, 10th of Ramadan, 6th of October, as I said. So, 
There are lots of details here about all these uh, dry ports and logistics centers that I do not want to waste your time. Again, as soon as you express your interest, any of you, whenever you express interest in any of these uh, uh, dry ports or logistics centers, uh, we uh, will be immediately, inshallah, talking together about the technical dimensions and uh, the other contractual aspects that are relevant to whatever you express interest about. Also, we are having uh, the river ports uh, that are also offered for investment in the field of river transport. For river transport, actually, it is something which is really, really important. And inshallah, we have started to develop it because it's really of pivotal importance for us in Egypt in order to uh, alleviate the burden from uh, the uh, other roads uh, and to make it much more affordable. And we hope that it will be promising when it comes to investment, whether for the establishment of the new ports or, or the operation management and the uh, re uh, handover uh, or upgrading of the already existing ports uh, actually the fleet the river fleet the companies who have a river fleet uh, or rolling stock uh, we are ready to cooperate with them for management and operation as well also we have another promising uh, thing in river transport actually it is between egypt and sudan uh, through Lake Nasser. We are now upgrading the high dam area uh, and its port and Wadi Halfa in uh, port in Sudan. This is a gift from us uh, to our Sudanese sisters and brothers and we are having a new platform uh, in Wadi Halfa uh, and we are upgrading the local platforms. We are uh, working on this uh, jointly uh, through the uh, Egyptian uh, authority called the Nile Valley Authority and we are ready to cooperate with you in order to uh, for you to provide uh, the uh, new fleets or uh, to upgrade the already existing uh, uh, river fleet uh, or river uh, rolling stock uh, that are owned by the Nile Valley uh, and the Nile Valley uh, company. I I want to apologize for being glancy. I'd like to conclude by expressing the thanks and appreciation to all the efforts that, efforts that are being exerted in order to enhance the Egyptian uh, British cooperation. And I'm uh, confident that we'll be successful in such mission, which is an, uh, a continuation of the excellent ties that are connecting both friend countries. I would like to thank all those who are participating with us, particularly my dear friend, uh, His Excellency, uh, the well respected ambassador, representing us and the best representation of Egypt actually uh, in the UK uh, and all my greetings are to all of you and I ho hope all the best for all of you and I hope that we, you will be cooperating much more with us and much more prosperity uh, in the relationships between Egypt and the UK and I end by saying peace be upon you all uh, so this is the conclusion I all we always conclude by saying peace be upon you all and peace. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for this very valuable presentation. And allow me, uh, Mr. Minister, to start with some of the questions and clarification that are requested by some of the participants. The first question, sir, is uh, about these projects. All these projects uh, uh, with, for, with the private sector, is it through the ministry or uh, through PPP uh, offering system or bidding process or it's case specific, sir? For our projects, all of them, uh, when it comes to direct uh, agreement uh, or uh, direct deals with us. Let me say we have three systems. The first system is that uh, we offer it uh, for uh, bidding through international financial bodies uh, and banks and for all uh, such projects. We have international transparent competitive bidding processes. Everybody can join. And if we do not find for a project, uh, if we do not find financial institutions or IFIs that are interested uh, in uh, financing our projects while we are having an international company that's well known uh, uh, for its 
efficiency in a specific project and they are getting also the financial the financing for it we do negotiate in this case we have main conditions that uh, they need to abide by one of these prerequisites is to uh, pay attention uh, to uh, the uh, interest rates uh, to uh, the same way we deal with ifis uh, and also grace periods uh, that allow us uh, uh, to implement uh, in uh, uh, with uh, easiness and also uh, to have uh, repayment periods uh, that are good in order to enable the uh, project to pay back. Also, no guarantees, uh, uh, no guaranteed commissions uh, because Egypt is a, a big country, so we do not pay such commissions. So we agree with the financier and the international contra uh, potential contractor. Uh, so uh, we agree with them that the local companies would be uh, participating also in the civilian dimensions or the normal of the consultancy uh, part that can be implemented by local companies. Uh, the last thing uh, is that the uh, more, whenever it's possible for the localization of these industries, whether we are when speaking about supplying rolling stocks uh, for metro, uh, trains, uh, uh, anything like that, uh, uh, we want to localize the, the industry. Uh, and uh, a third uh, pass is the last one that we are having now and it is uh I'd like to say that in the Ministry of Finance, there's something which is called PPP unit, uh, where we offer the PPP projects uh, or the triple P projects or BOT projects. Uh, we offer it to the investors through the PPP uh, or triple P unit in uh, the Ministry of Finance, where we uh, reach very quick, uh, satisfactory uh, deals by uh, or contracts uh, for both sides and it's approved and endorsed by the cabinet the same way we are doing with some of the projects that I, I have already mentioned to you when it comes to investments. Uh, also, uh, these are, I'd, so here I'd like to say that these are the three uh, tracks uh, or three uh, paths and scenarios that uh, can be adopted. Thank you, Mr. Minister. There is uh, another uh, uh, requester. Can they be given a copy? They want to be provided with a copy? No. I don't uh, mind at all. Uh, this is there, but actually, uh, please, be assured that this estimated cost that you will see in these presentations are just indicative. Pay attention that it's indicative because when we are putting the costs, it's a bit higher than what's real or what we expect to be. Why? Because you, do, you are not sure that it would be implemented this year. It may be implemented next year or the year after the next. So uh, we are putting some kind of estimated cost that's with a slight margin, margin uh, but anyway, everything would be updated and much more accurate when we sit together. So uh, my, we mind uh, uh, finally or ultimately what we agree on along with uh, taking opinions of uh, the consultants. Uh, so I'd like to say uh, I don't mind at all if you take this presentation. Uh, Mr. Minister, in relation to how can we quickly uh, communicate with the ministry or its affiliate institutions. Is there a specific email? Just pick up your phone and say the projects you have mentioned, we are interested, we want to be in, in a specific project and we will be giving you a, an appointment for tomorrow. We'll be telling you we can receive you tomorrow more, uh, tomorrow and we uh, talk to you uh, and then know what are the terms and conditions uh, and uh, with whom you will be uh, partnering uh, in the uh, local companies uh, or from the local companies and as what you have seen uh, when it comes to monorail uh, uh, and in the latest contract uh, with uh, Siemens uh, and DICA and with the Koreans as well and the latest Hyundai contract discussions only talk only two to three days because we are uh, well aware of what we want. We have uh, studied our uh, projects well. So the more the company coming to us, the more serious they are. And I know that you are all serious and respect companies. So the more uh, the company is serious, the uh, more uh, uh, or the speedier uh, the conclusion of a contract or a deal. We have Tariq Gamal. I'm so sorry for such interruption. 
Good morning, Mr. Minister. I just I was telling them that we have Engineer Hassan Alam and Tariq Al Gamal, and they know how we work on our projects, and they know that we, there are no delays in our projects, and we call them overnight and tell them tomorrow go work on this station or that line or come uh, for a one, uh, one kilo, uh, uh, kilometer of platforms in Ain Al Sokhna. Um, um, port or go work for five stations uh, parallel to each other uh, for the high speed train. So we have identified our prices and they cannot fool us actually. So we agree very quickly and we do not waste any time. There is a question here, here sir, about the sleeper cars. There is a question about the sleeper cars and it's referred to Ms. Radwa now in order to give her response. Because I met the Minister last November at the COP conference and he was aware and asked questions about um, railway infrastructure. We presented last April uh, a proposal to ENR and CMAF, which I understand you now have, Minister, and we are ready with UK Export Finance to fully finance this project but also to bring training for your workforce and also uh, for the tourist system of 2022, uh, 20 as minimum number of sleeper cars uh, for a five-star standard. Uh, we hope that you could approve this so that we could deliver the last part to you by December 2021. Thank you. What I have talked about in response to your question, sir, is that or what I have mentioned and offered to you is for operation and management. We already have a company that's managing sleeper cars. So what we're saying is that it is not uh, necessary that it would be the Egyptian government or ENR. It's not necessary that they would be owning the sleeper car company. I think that it can be offered to the private sector, whether from Egypt or international uh, friend uh, private sector to operate and manage such uh, sleeper car company. This is what we are talking about. But what you are mentioning is that we already offered for bidding through the CIMAF national company uh, a contract for supply of uh, uh, 200 sleeper cars, which are five stars. Uh, if we agree, actually, we are working now with uh, CIMAF, so you submit an, uh, your bid and others will submit their bids and proposals, and you are welcome. And then uh, your financial and uh, technical envelopes for uh, uh, will be evaluated. The same thing is what we have already done for the 100 uh, cargo uh, wagons or the freight wagons. So uh, we are preparing our uh, sleeper car company with such a new sleeper cars because when we are to offer the sleeper car company, it would be having its own fleet of five star sleeper cars and this would be an attraction for any investor to buy uh, this uh, company or to uh, participate in the operation or management because it is an ad hoc uh, company or affiliate company which is separate but is still affiliate uh, uh, to uh, the um, ENR or the Egyptian National Railway. So when you have international company operating and managing sleeper car company uh, and having such five-star sleeper cars, this would be really developing internal uh, tourism through, uh, and also the tourism uh, from Cairo to Rukhna Aswan, vice versa through the sleeper cars. So this is offered to you for investment if you're interested. Mr. Minister, there are two interventions. One of these are in related to the safety uh, dimensions, uh, and it is from real uh, safety uh, institutions, and they are ready to cooperate with you in the field of uh, railway and uh, the uh, experience sharing, and they are ready to cooperate with you. In 
And another thing, sir, is uh, in ASGC. I think it is a UAE group. They are ready to uh, finance uh, the uh, projects of transport in Egypt. We are ready. Those who are interested, just tell us your name, your contact information, tell us that you are coming to us next week, and tell us that you want to invest in this or that, any of the activities that we have mentioned, and we're ready. Uh, and in relation to what you have said, or uh, building what you have said about safety, we are ready, and we'll be cooperating with uh, any uh, sister company or any friend company uh, that would be helping us uh, for the security and safety in railway, and we will do this immediately without any further delays. So, Mr. Minister, shall they send to request a meeting with you right away? They, those who want to talk to us uh, and help us in safety and security and on anything railway, just send us uh, your ideas. Tell us what are your ideas. Tell us what you are ready to do uh, uh, to help us with uh, in relation to these ideas, or what you are ready to contract with, uh, to have a contract with us on, and uh, to say I am uh, I want to come to uh, your office uh, that day or this day. Just tell us like one week or two weeks ahead of the time you will come to us, and we'll be receiving you to supply you with 200 sleeper five-star wagon uh, carriages. Um, we've also offered you other solutions which would allow you to do other things, including workforce training and at least 30% of the business of supplying the solution coming from Egypt. Um, the, the presentation has been passed to you by Radwa Sultan today. I trust you will read it and come back to us. Thank you. Alfred, if I could say something, I, I think um, in terms of feedback to Rod, I think the benefit of a session like this is for us to all contribute. And what I hear the minister saying, Rod, is, you know, get someone in front of me with the presentation and we can have a look at it. There are other parties and we'll put you in touch with the right parties. I, I think um, I, th I think Rad Radwa um, getting it sent on to the ministry, um, it may it may get lost somewhere. I think I mean I, I heard two or three times the, the minister say that they come come and talk to us about it, which I think is particularly difficult at the minute with the um, with all the COVID restrictions. Um, so um, you, you may find that there's someone else on the call having heard. Um, what you're saying, you know, whether Alfred can actually help um, from Cairo to find someone else who, who might help, you know, um, a commercial. Alfred, carry the message. Alfred did not want to help. Alfred is joking. <laughs> Minister, uh, Minister, would you kindly allow us allow me to speak in Arabic? I am from the same company that Rod is representing here. Um, it's, Talking now from London, from IS company, this company had submitted a proposal to you for a project for upgrading some of the sleeper cars and also supplying 200 five-star new sleeper cars and providing all the services for tourists. And two of these are for PWDs or persons with disabilities and there is a restaurant on board and we are ready to provide by the end of this year actually to provide 20 uh, ready to operate uh, sleeper cars and by the end of next year this would be 50 sleeper cars all the specifications that have been requested by SIMAF is what we had submitted and supposedly they had seen this and they should have presented it to your excellency mr minister however unfortunately they didn't present it to you so far mr minister also we have dp, DP morgan company this is the financing institution in addition to the british government and his excellency ambassador of the uh, of britain to Egypt had talked to you last week about this. 
and we are ready to provide all services in order to push forward such cooperation between the British government and the Egyptian government in relation to uh, this uh, project around 600 million are guarantee uh, are the guarantee provided uh, by the British government in Sterling, of course. Uh, so now time is really pacing with us, we are pacing with time. So uh, we had submitted an audio to fulfill our uh, commitments to about what, what we will do by the end of this uh, year. You have all the right to say what you have said. The latest meeting was under the uh, chairmanship of uh, the uh, Prime Minister when uh, we had CIMAF uh, concluded with as, as CIMAF uh, the contract for the 1,000 uh, cargo wagons or freight wagons. I personally actually uh, preferred uh, to have a direct contract as just this. Uh, I wanted to have a direct contract with the international companies working in the field in order to have a quick path uh, for uh, the procedures. However, the instructions were is that this needs to be done through CIMAP for the percentage for the local industries. And actually, I had respected this because we are the government. At the end of the day, uh, we uh, need uh, to abide by the instructions. And we are so keen uh, to uh, have our industries for rolling stock and railway to be pushed forward as well. Yes, CIMAP uh, maybe have been delayed a bit or a lot, actually. Uh, so uh, we will be uh, addressing formally the cabinet uh, in relevant to this uh, so that uh, these proposals or bids shall be uh, shall be submitted to us after the financial and uh, the technical evaluations and we will be working uh, robustly with the math so that they would work quickly on this will be pushing them and we uh, will be notifying you uh, for what relates uh, to contracting so there will be 30 percent uh, for a local component uh, and then we will start by 30 and then it will be 70 percent afterwards so when we are ending 70 percent would be manufactured in CIMAP this is what we are uh, saying sir you are speaking about the 21st sleeper cars it will have the 30 percent and the rest would be 70 percent no sir the first 20 will be all like models so they will be manufactured in Britain but for the rest it would be uh, 30 percent local uh, component and then 70 percent local uh, component uh, the Excellency minister says thank you so much uh, thank you uh, for this. Uh, there's a question from engineer Tarek Al Gamal Redcon in relation to the multi story parking uh, for the uh, LRT and the uh, monorail. So, can you please give more, much more information about this? Uh, actually, there's another thing actually that I for, have forgotten to, talk, to tell you about. Uh, it's that we have an exhi exhibition or fair of transport, transport fair in Egypt. Uh, it's called Trans 100 uh, 2021 in the new. Uh, Cairo Congression Center or Conference Center that's annexed to Al Manara uh, Hall in the fifth settlement in New Cairo. You are all invited uh, to participate actively or very actively, and you are so much welcome in this uh, conference and this fair. Please. Your experience of seeing people come to you, we, we often hear that British companies are not as visible as some from some other countries. So is, is there anything that you would be saying to British companies we should be doing more of um, compared to perhaps the French or what, 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 what do we need to do? What do we need to be better at to, to help you more and make more money ourselves? As I told you, sir, uh, maybe weekly, uh, I met Alistair, um, Hyundai, Britain, and Siemens Mobility, the chairman of all these companies, also the chairperson of TELUS, all these companies on weekly basis, they call us, they contact our uh, focal points, 
in order to know what's offered because sometimes uh, there are projects that are offered by international uh, financial institutions but sometimes uh, there are some projects that are offered directly uh, uh, through uh, the uh, ministry so when it comes to the international financial institutions uh, we uh, do advertise uh, uh, and we work with these uh, international financial institutions so the role of uh, the chairman of uh, these companies in uh, british uh, it's their role uh, to uh, proactively ask for such information gordon is there any, uh, is there anything you were wanting to ask as co-chair of this committee i just i i did uh, one of my colleagues we we asked a question and uh, it's really about what is uh, Egypt's ambition to develop a, a comprehensive electrical vehicle infrastructure to uh, assist in meeting the you know, upcoming climate change, really. Would, would, would that be the charging network? Yeah, or? the charging network. I mean, we're aware of the, uh, you know, the, the colossal uh, amount of vehicles within Egypt and Cairo, and uh, it's just of interest. We see it being rolled out in London. Uh, and we, we, we just wondered what, what the Egypt's, uh, the minister's position is on that, on the electrical vehicles going forward. Uh, in Egypt, like uh, different uh, countries in the whole world, uh, we are planning or heading for uh, the green sustainable transport. Uh, for uh, it's a green transport that preserves and protects the environment. Uh, uh, for the public health, environment protection, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but in order to go for such a green uh, transport, we have two tracks or two paths to follow. Uh, so first, we had gone quickly actually uh, for uh, or headed for the use of natural gas in public transportation like buses uh, that are uh, now being fueled by natural gas in Egypt. Uh, and also we had planned and we are heading for the e-buses or electric buses and very soon we'll be having electric buses that will be in the uh, in streets we already have some electric buses already there but these are being piloted and it will take uh, so much more time because and as we all know the batteries uh, uh, the electric uh, batteries are really expensive and they are manufactured only by one company or two companies in the whole world so it will take much more time for pilot thing about uh, we have a very big ambitious project uh, uh, for the BRT or uh, the bus uh, uh, bus rapid uh, transit uh, that will be having all over Egypt starting with the ring road for the greater Cairo region the GCR and this is in collaboration with uh, French companies uh, and manufacturers uh, from Egypt the manufacturers of e-buses um, so we are heading for this actually uh, for the next period uh, uh, to a large extent. Uh, this is in addition to another thing, which is another direction that we're having, which is the metro uh, and the e-mobility generally, e-mobility on rail, uh, the uh, also electric uh, high-speed uh, train. So all uh, the uh, railway mobility is uh, contracting as e-mobility or electric mobility. So we are heading for all of these. Uh, and also the companies who are working or, or to be working with us on the main roads or the ring road, uh, the this, it will be also all working with electricity. Also, if anybody who wants to work with us for supplying e-buses uh, or uh, the e-mobility or electric uh, mobility uh, for railway, uh, we are ready for such a kind of cooperation uh, in order to implement such projects. Um, uh, actually, uh, in Egypt uh, or actually all over the world, we do hope that uh, all uh, the transport means would be electrified because uh, the uh, transport is the biggest contributor to contamination and emissions and things like that. So uh, when it comes to charging stations uh, or charging areas, uh, this, this is being done in parallel with a project 
uh, for the new transport systems. Uh, actually, uh, the small vehicles or passenger vehicles, uh, uh, private vehicles, uh, these are there. There is a considerable or significant number number of these in Egypt, uh, and the charging stations uh, are there either in some streets or uh, in some private uh, charging stations uh, uh, owned by some uh, people who are owning such uh, uh, cars or vehicles. Uh, and now we are heading for joint manufacturing of uh, electric uh, uh, automotives uh, through uh, collaboration with different uh, companies uh, from all over the world. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. If, 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 if I may, Minister, I, I think we're probably, we, 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 you, 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 you've been talking about it, we, we, we are extremely grateful to the efficiency and the effectiveness of Sama, who has been our interpreter today. Um, and I, I think um, we, we, we have run on and we've, we've taken up an awful lot of your time um, uh, or, or, or already. Um, so I think it, 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 it's, it's probably right that we should um, let you get back to um, the other things. And for, for those, the, the, the chamber, the Egyptian British Chamber of Commerce has set up this um, uh, ba ba basically facility called the Trade Accelerator. Um, in the sectors, there's one on infrastructure where we'll actually be able to um, talk to people. But I think um, uh, what I really want to say is, is, is a very big thanks to you, Minister, for giving us so much time and so much information today. I think um, you know, it, if as British companies we cannot be inspired to find something, then we're, we're getting something wrong. Um, Thanks both to His Excellency Tanak Adol for coming and to you, Anissa, for coming. Um, uh, thank you for your support in, in what you're doing. Um, and as Rod mentioned that Radbo was doing something, that's one of your team. Anissa, I don't know if Radbo's on today, but certainly I think as British companies, we feel the support of the Department of International Trade in, in helping us do things. So thank you for that. So look, th this was just the first one. We've kicked it off as the, as, as the chamber. Um, with the support of DIT, and I now, for, for future meetings, we'll, we'll, we hand over to both Alfred, who, who's been masterminding the Q&A today, and, and to you, Gordon, um, so as, as, as the co-chairs for this. So, Minister, Your Excellency, from all of us, thank you so much for your time today. Um, we, are, we are most grateful. You've given us more than we could possibly have expected. So, Thank you very much indeed for that. And I think that brings us to the close of um, today's session. So um, there we are. I will see you all on the chat boxes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. I just uh, want to point uh, one final uh, uh, comment that came from the audience. Uh, yeah, Mr. Minister, in the last uh, session with the meetings uh, of uh, the uh, Bridgeside uh, Cross Trail uh, had made an intervention uh, for cooperation and you had proposed to them to draft an MOU. They had drafted it and they will be presenting it to you, Mr. Minister, so that you will be reviewing it and to be ready for signature, sir. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you so much, everybody. Your Excellency was great uh, being with you as always. And uh, uh, we hope that the uh, Infrastructure Committee will have more fruitful meetings. Uh, okay, thank you, Alfred.